it is time once again for another Twitter thread, this time hosted on MBT Yu-Gi-Oh 2 for some reason. Anyway, today we are talking about some unexpected decks that won big tournaments. Not every Yu-Gi-Oh deck can be a winner, but sometimes those crappy piles of cards that you wouldn't expect to make it through a local make it all the way through a YCS. Today we're going to be talking about some of those, and here's mine. At YCS Atlanta in 2012, in the middle of Dino Rabbit and Windup format, Marquise Henderson won a YCS with Tech Genus. This deck defies explanation. It's playing Tengu, of course, alongside eight TG monsters and then like 20 traps, including TG1 EM1. It was shocking that this list was able to make it that far, let alone win. And a lot of the uh, discussions with him afterwards are basically just people going, how did... How did this happen? He didn't win, but I think it's worth mentioning the Gren God Yishan McNabb getting second place at YCS Portland in 2019 with this. Yeah, this is uh, Gren Maju. Um, it's playing three copies alongside the Golden Castle of Stromberg package. But to be fair, Yishan winning with Gren Maju is not a new phenomenon. Necroz format was crazy. Like, obviously, the best deck by a country mile was Necroz, and everyone was looking to be the deck that could beat it. Jeff Jones was like, no, 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 I got it. It's Fire Fist. Yes, so Thunder Dragon famously was the deck that could not, for the life of it, win a YCS. Despite the fact that it was clearly one of the, if not the best deck, it just couldn't take one down. And it got its best chance when it entered the YCS Milan Finals versus Prank Kids. Now, this is before Meow Moo, and then it got absolutely owned. It turns out Prank Kid has a 100% win rate versus this deck. Dire Donawal. Remember when Vlad got top 16 with Generator in 2020 with a now privated deck profile? Um, yes. Torres winning a YCS in 2018 with BA Seca in the middle of absolute Sky Striker dominance. Yeah, I don't know how he did it. Uh, Seca Burning Abyss was one of the coolest decks of all time. It's unfortunate that it is basically no longer playable, but it really takes a genius to look at a format in which everyone's winning with spell cards and say, mm mm. I'm going to play as few of those as possible. I don't think anyone expected the plant victory, or if they did, they thought it would be like Sun Avalon combo fest. Instead, it was Rika. Yep, a recent example. Um, <laughs> it, it is impressive that someone won a YCS with Mystic Mine, period. Mystic Mine as a pure build was believed to be pretty solved, but Limas, impressive deck building around the Ojama traps, as well as no Oracle, no terraforming, none of that shit. Makes for an intriguing story. Not a premier tournament, but I'm astonished that at Adventure Verte format, this deck won back-to-back -back Chalice Limes. People just weren't respecting Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Didn't Vlad win a giant card with this? The runner-up of one of Yu-Gi-Oh's most beloved format namesakes, Edison, was just not very good. Um... We actually got a PM from some people who were really big in the Edison community when we hit this in history, and they were like, listen, the second place list from Edison, New Jersey, no one knows how it got there. No one knows how it got second. Not a single person understands what was going on in this deck. In finals, it just cratered. Fucking World Chalice winning a YCS in 2018 got me so unbelievably hyped. World Chalice was so sick. It was awesome that it won that match. And then the deck immediately cratered. I think it doesn't have a top after this one. Oh, the same guy? Brought this to Euros, got top 64, and that's the other top that this deck has. That's so funny. Th I, I'm sorry, I, I, I hate to say this, this was not a bad deck. Is that his fucking senior picture? <laughs> Did he just give them the senior picture? In hat format, Laval Artifact won an ARG circuit series. You might think, oh, you know, maybe it had good matchups. In the finals, a 2-0'd Infernity. Flipping Dust Flame Blast two games in a row is apparently good. That is a card that I have literally never heard of. What the, wait, what is this deck trying to do? Engage gets unbanned, gets second in Nats. <sighs> second in a YCS. How many times does it have to happen before you put this fucking card back? For years, even after Grass got banned, Infernoid would just sneak tops. It happened even through an Eternal format and it was prevalent uh, against Soul's Spiral in 2020. You know that dumbass who won a giant card with Melfi? Well, guess what? Back in 2012, in the middle of Windup and Zector and Dino Rabbit, YCS Guadalajara was won by six Samurais. 
Sheen and Smoke Signal were both limited. That was a really cursed format. Like, clearly Windup and Zector and Dino Rabbit were the best decks by a lot, but every YCS but would be won by a different flavor of just unplayable garbage. Blue Eyes overcame the odds, and all it took was a bunch of support meant to fuck over an already weakened metagame. Truly inspiring. Let's actually check the, uh, the world's one. Okay, so, uh, at this event we had Blue Eyes, Blue Eyes, Magispector, Monarch, Magispector, Monarch, Blue Eyes, PKBA, Speedroid BA, Blue Eyes, Madolce, PKBA, PKBA, Magispector, Magispector, Pendulum, Monarch, Blue Eyes, Blue Eyes, Draco Slayer, Blue Eyes, Cyframe. Shuts out the Dolce player, by the way. Still unreal, the pure Sacred Beast beat out the entire meta, including Striker Fur Hire to win the 2020 Australia WCQ. It is almost unbelievable, but it did happen. This bad boy got second at YCS Toronto 2012, piloted by Jeff Jones. What was Jeff doing with this list? I've, I've heard multiple different accounts. One person has told me he was trying to bait people. This list basically exists to make people, like, make the largest possible pog face under the sun. And there's videos of Jeff, like, beating established players with this deck. But it is just fucking awful. It's terrible. Jeff Jones made top 32 in 2014 at the WCQ with this chat of a deck. Is this just... We're just going over every insane decision Jeff Jones personally has ever made. In June 2013, during Full Power Ruler Book, Chainburn won the German Nationals, beating Infernity. Apparently, somehow not a single Dragon Ruler and Spellbook made top 8. That's crazy. This also won Dragon Duels in 2017. At Nats! Brave Nordic got a top 8 at YCS Ottawa in June of this year. Um... When I saw this on a piece of paper, I legitimately was like, I'm not going to have to read the Nordic cards, am I? And thankfully, the answer was no, because no one else ever did anything with them. That was a regional. Oh, YCS Ottawa. Nope. Nuh uh. YCS Vegas 2014 people said, Can use the rulers to summon Drake Sack? Watch this. Mecha Phantom Beast, top four. At YCS Uchtrek, a 20 card three axis pile got second place, losing to Salaman Great in the final. It main decked Hunter Dragon. But no, EU events are much more competitive. During hat format, Desfrog OTK got top 32 at an NAWCQ. ARGCS Columbus was slated to be one of the best events of the season. It was the height of Ravine Ruler format where five busted versions of Dragon Rulers existed. The finals were Evil Swarm versus Constellar. <laughs> this one, YCS Quito today. Huh? Really? I thought it was a 3v3. No, it did not. Okay, thank you. Literally lying. All in all, I think the takeaway from this video is that frequently it's not the deck that propels a player to a top cut finish, but the player that propels a deck. Sometimes. And sometimes your Doom Caliber gadget list just gets the dream run. <laughs> All right, 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 all